two. Welcome back, WNST Towson, in Baltimore and WNST.net and Baltimore positive all bye week. But before we say bye bye, and I got senioritis, man. This is my last segment here before uh, we're setting sail for the islands and Seattle and bye week, and hopefully we're victorious. But so I put this whole trip together with my wife. We're going to go away for a week and a half and get off Facebook and see palm trees and eat poi and stuff like that. And we're supposed to come back on the Wednesday of New England week. So it's like 10 days away. We're already going halfway around the world. And for whatever reason, we decided to bail on San Francisco the last day. We're going to do like a day in San Francisco. And our favorite restaurant is not open in San Francisco on that Tuesday. So I'm like, why are we going to stay in San Francisco when our favorite place isn't open other than me spending $300 on like dim sum or something stupid? So I'm like, let's just go home. We'll get home. I check the flight. The flight lands at 3.30. And your Halloween event is in my calendar at like 5.00. And I learned that it's like it's seven and I'm going to be on island time, which is going to mean it's going to be like lunchtime and I'm going to be caffeinated and probably dressed like Laverne. Am I Laverne or am I Shirley? I'm Laverne. I'll be Laverne at this party. So Bradley and Nikki Bozeman are here to tell me about their Halloween event and about anti-bullying and your charity and all that stuff. And I tell you, Nikki, you grabbed the headset like you've done this more than your husband has done this. Is, 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 have you been the communications athlete in the Bozeman family? Uh, I would say it's about 50-50. Nah, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah you sure? Uh, it, well, he's been interviewed more now that like... That, now, now, yeah. In right. college... You were a big guy. I don't know. It was still... in your In his later years, I mean... I mean, no offense, I played girls basketball. But so it's like Alabama football, girls basketball, there's a little bit of no, I don't know, a little bit difference in hype between the two. Girls basketball is like a big deal. They, they keep telling me every year. Final four, I'm filling out brackets, all that stuff, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Spoken like someone that's from Tuscaloosa. You know, there's football and then there's everything else, exactly. right? Exactly, yep. Absolutely. Yep. So do you guys want to give your – what do you want to – I get 15 minutes here. We could talk about anti-bullying. I want to hear your love story. I want to hear a proposal. I want to hear how you met. The whole deal. Go ahead. You want my social security number too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pot you down and deal with her because we brought her – when the wives come out and they want to tell stories about – so the, let's start with the charity and the foundation because it's important to you guys, and that's why you're doing this thing. Um, I've shown you all the wacky pictures all the years that I've emceed the Ravens uh, Halloween party, and you know we're into the spirit of things. Why this? Why here? Why now? And then we'll get into the charity uh, for the event. Sure. I mean, okay. Halloween. It's a fun night. Why Perfect. not? Perfect. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's October 29th, Tuesday, October 29th, seven, not five, seven to eleven um, at Wood Home Country Club. Uh, I mean, we actually are. Uh, we were talking to our agent, and they had helped with the Todd Heap. Um, they have a lot of people that did sure. that Halloween party, and he's like, "Hey, wouldn't this be like a great kickoff event?" And we kind of threw it around, and like older guys, like Morgan Cox and all them, like obviously, I talked to their wives, and they're like, "Oh wow, that that was a big that was a big event." And we're like, "All right, nothing like shooting for the stars." <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's a costume party, adults only. Um, open bar. I mean, the food is phenomenal um there's going to be so many guys there we've there's, done several events at woodhome so i know how good the food's going to be it's, I, I can vouch it's really for that. good yeah um the menus i mean chicken wings macaroni and cheese bar pizza italian food there's everything um alcohol and then uh costume contest uh Apparently, there's a competition already in the locker room. Who's going to win? Is it quiet? I mean, nobody's telling anybody what they're doing, right? Like, it's no, a, everything's a surprise. You got to show up to see it. So fair enough. All I, a secret. I, I thought it was kind of always that way. There have been some over the years, just outlandishly good. I was out with a lunch with Matt Stover a couple weeks ago, and I remember the year that he and his family did the Incredibles, and his kids. So to me, when I meet your kids. Doesn't matter whether it's 1995. You agree, right? 2004. They're that age, right? So I don't. Matt Stover's kids are like in college now, <laughs> and they were like these little wee people in little incredible outfits. And I'm like, well, you haven't kicked the ball in 12 years, so let's back that up. All right. So what year? Uh, I was 05. Well, yeah, it was 14 years ago. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why my kids are like now 21 and like you know 17 because it's 14 years ago. I'm like. Wow, the years just go by. How is it that I don't ever age? How, do, how is it that I continue to look young like this? So Halloween for you guys, you're doing this event. Give me anti-bullying and give me – I've been out to your website, uh, Brad Nikki Bozeman Foundation dot – no. Brad Nikki Bozeman dot com. Not foundation, just dot com. Yep. And anti-bullying for you guys, 
I'm looking at you two, I, thinking that you probably weren't bullied much, but I guess everybody's been bullied, right? I mean, doesn't matter how big you are, where you play ball, everybody's been bullied at some point, yes? Right, for sure. I mean, you know, growing up for me, you know, I wasn't always 6'5", 325 pounds. Um, you know, for you were me, only a three-star, not a five-star. Exactly. You went through that early. So, uh, so when, I, when I was really young, I looked, honestly looked just like Augustus Glue from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, I was Augustus just a – I was just a butter. We're gonna ball. pull some. Do photos. not drink yeah. this chocolate water. <laughs> I wish Costa, I had my she would fall in the river. Uh huh. Go ahead. But I mean, that, that's what I look like, and you know, I was a lot bigger than all my other buddies, and you know, I got a, I got a lot of crap for it, and you know, there was nothing I could really control about it. You know, luckily I was able to grow kind of out of that pretty quick. Were you athletic? Or did, you, did you play any other sports or no? I was big. I was You're, big. Okay, you but know? you but you you didn't play ball. You weren't playing. I played baseball. I played. A little bit of basketball wasn't really good at all of that, but um, uh, well, think, how does sports find you then? You know, I was just football was was kind of my my outlet. Um, how old? I think I started when I was six or seven years old. Oh, so you, you so were I was young. I was okay, I was okay. a really young kid uh, playing, and I fell in love. I loved hitting people. Uh, that was that was my favorite. Just chasing people around, and and. Do you have uh, a nickname? They call you Tank or something like that when you're like seven and you're running guys over. No, not really. But you were bigger than everybody. Yeah, else. I was. I was a lot bigger. I'll find a picture. I mean, it's it's comical how much bigger I was. You were standing else. in the back in the. In I, the I looked. Picture. I looked like my buddy's dad. You know, I mean, I was. Okay. I was that much taller than everybody. So, um, but it was you know for me you know I, I I took a lot of crap on that and then still to the day I mean you get four false starts. Or four penalties in the game, right. and you know you get just pounded on social media, and that's still a form. Um, but you know, obviously, I'm a lot mature. And a lot By the of- way, we ran into you guys. I want to give this out. So this is this is the reason they're out, and it's serendipity the way the world works. Saturday night, my wife was sleeping in, and at ten after six, decided she wanted to go to Fells Point Festival, and the show started at six fifteen. So we got new. We ran over, did our whole night. We're walking through Fells Point. We weren't even going to go out. And now four and a half hours later, we've eaten Indian food, we're drinking beer, we're out in the street, we're walking through the city, we're walking through Fells Point. We said, let's go to Amici's. All right, let's go get some meatballs at Amici's. We turn the corner, Pete texts me, says, well, we're going to start the show at 7 or 7.30 with the Bozemans. And I'm like, you know, I'm not texting him, it's 8.15, I'm not going to text. I mean, they're going to be going into meetings, they're, you know, they're at the hotel, I'll get it after the game. I turn the corner and I walk up High Street past the new meatball joint. Sabatinos, and I got my new glasses, right? Thank, thanks, uh, Dr. Grant. Appreciate you. And now I can see distance. And I look, and I'm like, the hell's Bradley Bozeman doing out in the middle of High Street? You were like the – you fell out. You were like the first one. I saw you. And then I, you had like a whole posse and your family and all that stuff. And I'm like – so I take a picture with them, and I say, what time are you going to do? It's 7.30. I text Pete. I'm like, hey, you ask? I just ran into Bozeman. We got 1.6 million people in Baltimore, and I ran into him on the corner of, of Albemarle and, and High Street in front of Sabatino's. And we took a picture, and after the first or second penalty, I don't know what it was, it was now my fault for keeping you out late. Uh, on social media. I yeah, said, we'll, oh, blame, yeah. we'll blame that. Yeah, I said, yeah, sure. that it was, was, that was, it was my fault. For be- You took a picture with him. You had him out late. Because I think I posted the picture like 10, 15. I posted when I walked home. I'm like, I ran into him at 8, 15. Now these guys, now they're not allowed to have dinner the night before the game because I'm bad luck, you know. So I get it too, man. I mean, I tell my wife, you got to have skin like an armadillo, right, to do this. 100%. But there, then there's the other part of it where you're a kid and you're being bullied. And you don't know where to turn. And you don't want to tell anyone. We've all been there at school one way or another. We've either seen it or been a part of it. When I think back to my middle school experience at Holliburton, it's the worst experience of my life. I tell people, not because I would, every, it was just, it was a free-for-all. You know what I mean? All day, every day. And I can't imagine that if you could use this as a weapon, what, People use it on me. I'm 51. I'm a big boy. I thought everybody was going to love me 30 years ago when I did radio. I'm cool with it. Sometimes my family's not. Some, you know, My son's grown up with it, but I'm used to it. It's one of the reasons I don't take phone calls. But I can't imagine being a child or raising a child, and this is where you guys come in and the work you're trying to do, right? Right. Of course. And I feel like everybody that we talk to, um, everybody has a story. And like we said, you see the end product now, but that's this is not like how we started. Well, I started. That was kind of the problem. I was like five foot ten in like the fifth grade. I was so tall. You have the same story, kind of, sort of, in that sorta, way. Yeah. Kind of, sort of, yeah. I was just like so tall, but I mean, I'm a girl. So a guy's tall, it's like, oh, yeah, he's so big. A girl's tall. The guys are like, what is wrong with you? Why are you so tall? And I had like a size 11 foot 
And my mom's like, well, I guess you have to wear guys' shoes because they don't make girls' shoes that big when you're now, in middle your school. Uh, Atlanta, well, Kennesaw, Georgia. Okay, so you're, you're a suburban kid. Yes. So um, Luke likes that because he's thinking of Georgia Championship Wrestling. Exactly. There yes. you and, go. Yeah, there you go. Um, so big hands, big feet. I mean, just a big person in general. I wasn't always like super heavy, but I was just super big. So anyway, got a lot of got a lot of fun uh, feedback. But from as guys. big people, sports sort of finds you to some degree because when you're big, they can usually find something for you to do. Whether it's volleyball, football, exactly. basketball. What? Hey, you're big. Uh, here's the thing that can have you fit in and be. You can be the most valuable person. In right. the group, and now all of a sudden you. But not everyone can experience that through sports or even through education. Um, I don't want to say I was the smartest guy in the class, but if you were, you got picked on, right? I mean, it, 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 there's all it of that. A bad thing to be a nerd, you know. That, oh, no, you don't want to be too smart. No, you, too you, smart. You, no, you, you, you know, you're, t- you're sucking up to the teachers and whatever. All, every kid went through that, but I think in the modern era, it, the dangers we hear and the tragedies that we hear about. In, uh, in social media, and again, I mean, you, you have a couple penalties, you're a professional, you know, you learn in Alabama, I, I would think you learn in Alabama real quick, real quick, that fans, usually alcohol and a tailgate's involved, I can only imagine walking through somewhere, you know, in Alabama, you, you're used to it, but, right. but when you're 10, you're not, when you're a kid, and when you're a young girl, and you're a little bigger, or a little different, or a different color, or a different whatever is different about you, that, uh, that's something that I think everybody should be focused on, and and I don't know that we talk enough about it, quite frankly, right? I mean, because because it is something that kids don't want to talk about, right? And I think it's like a hushed subject. So, like, nobody wants to talk about it when they're getting bullied, and then when you get older, it's just kind of like something that you were just supposed to, like, get over, and which when you're older, you're more mature, and you're kind of, you're at the end, but no one is talking about and helping people that are at the beginning. So we'll go into these schools, and when um, you're talking about taking calls, we went to the schools, and we normally go to middle schools, and at the end, we're like, you know, we're going to open up the mic. This isn't a chance to, like, tell on each other. This is just a chance to, like, open up your heart if that's what you feel or whatever it is. And um, honestly, that's been the most um, just real genuine conversations we've had with the kids. And I think that's been the best part of this whole experience because I mean, we've had kids, um, we've been in auditoriums, the whole auditorium's crying. Um, there's no dry eye. The principals are boohooing. There's people that have said like, I've continually, continuously tried to commit suicide. Um, there's, it's, it's, it's serious. A lot, a lot more than you would think. Intervention. You, you, you You wouldn't think, you know, maybe, here or there, but this was, I mean, at least every other school. It's I mean, almost the norm. Tell me about your mission to do this. I mean, you guys obviously love and tell your tell your romance story. You know, I proposed on one knee on the top of Federal Hill. There were no cameras there, but you 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 went about this a different way. You want you want to give the story or no? Do you want to tell your insight or? This is the part where I get his, hers, and then I want to figure out what the truth is. I want to play the judge. I want to play Judge Judy. Okay, go ahead. So, okay, so we kind of started. He started planting seeds because la- when they won the national championship, the year which year? I know it was like the, it, they always skip a year. It's like they win, Clemson wins. They. Win, I hope Clemson the Nationals wins. fans never get to say this. By the way, so go ahead. Um. So then there was a previous year where the girlfriends all like jumped onto the field and took pictures with everyone, and it was just like it's cool. And you know, you're in college, you're like, oh, I want to be like that. So, um, he said, hey, if we win, I'm gonna like pull you onto the field and we'll take pictures like on the 50 yard line. And I was like, cool. Um, so that's all fun. Well, until the president shows up. So the president is at the game. So president brings secret service. So the secret service lined the field after the game. And you're not secret. Oh, well, it's not a secret that I was about to get tased. So he goes to go jump on the field and he's literally like, we're in the stands and he's like reaching for me to jump. And there is this lady and she is looking at me and she goes, if you jump, I will tase you. And I'm like, uh, thinking like, this is mall cop over here. Like, yeah, whatever. And so I go to like jump. She hits the taser. It's like, I'm like, oh, she is so serious. Like she is going to tase me. And Bradley is looking at her like, you cannot tase her. 
what so he talk he turns so i'm here he turns his back and he's talking to his offensive line coach and he's like they're like you could tell they're in a panic and i'm like you know who cares like it's fine we just won't get a picture like why does it matter and so they grab he grabs his creden- credentials and the secret Ser- and gives them to me and the circuit service lady goes absolutely not that doesn't work like that and he's like these are literally the credentials to get on the field so they are, there's a news crew like walking by and he just so happens that the producer for ESPN was there and he grabs the producer and he's looking at him and he is like frantically yelling his offensive line coach and all of a sudden the producer like grabs the like a magic key out of his pocket and it's like the all access pass or whatever and hands it to me. So he kind of motions me down we go we get on the steps and he and the had, secret service still thought you had to go. She no, she's looking at me, and I he has my arm, and I'm like, I'm with him, please, I'm with him, I am with him. Like I'm so paranoid, and she's just looking at me, like staring me down, and I'm like, okay, I think we're good, we made it. So uh, anyway, it was just it was just crazy. And then, not to even mention that game is the game that like um. Jalen second and 26 yeah Jalen started it just kind of snowballed down they I literally his best friend flew in I'm gonna do radio in Alabama every week this is oh lord it's so crazy so when we tell people about this night I'm like oh so he um he his best friend flew in the it was like I don't even know the score at halftime it was like we were like four to 16 or we were down by a decent amount so I looked at his friend and I go we were losing to Georgia and I go they're going to switch quarterbacks. I'm like, they're going to put Tua in. And his but his best friend was the quarterback. Like, that's how they met. They were roommates. And I said, Cooper, they're going to switch to Tua. And he's like, absolutely not. They won't do that. Absolutely not. That's the quarterback. Absolutely not. They come out the second half, and they start Tua. And I'm like, I freaking told you. So, um, anyway, Tua, went, Tua comes back. I want back. to go to a game with her. So, I, I'm very, like – I want to Enjoy. adopt them like the Flynns. Uh, I think I adopted the Flynn family for 10 years. So there you no, go. I want to sit with you at a game. So this is better than Twitter. It's overtime. So we make it into overtime. Well, that we missed the field goal to make us win. You're not on the field yet, though. No, no, no. This is just the game. The game, okay. So we missed the field goal so to and win. And you had concocted you are going to propose to her after this? Yeah. Only if we won, apparently. If, if we won, yeah. Oh, and I so forgot to what happened. Excuse me. When we won. That oh, was, no, that this was is the part where I get mindset. his story, and then I'm going to figure out what the truth is, all right? I mean, I've heard your thing, all right? Well, you got to There's some it. more points in here. So I my family my, my family knew. So my mom is Why sitting next that? to me. My mom is you sitting next to me. I'm from the South. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's sitting next to me. And I ain't going to surprise anybody like that. Panic, sweat, and I'm looking at her like, wow, she's a really good sports fan. Like, this I is, love how he says I'm from the South. Anyway, going to overtime, they throw this ridiculously long bomb, and I'm like, oh, we won. We're crying. We won a national championship. And that's what we're thinking about. So everyone's like, oh, did you know you're going to get proposed to? I'm like, did you watch the game? Like, that was the best game of all time almost. And then all that other crap happened, and then there you go. Then we're So you didn't get tased. Okay. I didn't get tased. So what happened? So you go over to pull her over. They're going to tase her, right? And by the way, if, has Marshall ever told you about the time he got tased? Uh, I've heard the story. He's never told me, though. Well, you know, when things go well, you know, it, make sure we're in first place. But he'll tell you about it. So, where, so you're on the field. You're line coach. Knew, how many people knew you were proposing to her? So no one knew except for our head trainer because I wanted to kind of make sure it was an okay thing to do. Um, her parents and my parents. Saban didn't know. No. No, he did not know. Because that was, that was my he last year. He would never year. approve of it. Exactly. You asked for you asked, Exactly. Right, you, know, you asked for uh, – okay, got it. Asked for forgiveness. You know, it's, okay, it's fair all enough. Good. Uh, but so we win, you know, all that Has happens. anybody done this before in Alabama? I mean, it's is, the first one in national championship, national championship history. Okay, so, I, okay. I've just seen a few. So, yeah. And so get over there, try to get her down, king her down, and all of a sudden just the Fox producer and ESPN producer comes flying over – Rips her down to the field, and then I get to pop the knee and, and uh, ask her to marry What would have happened if, if she didn't get – like, it, what it would have happened if it was just straight up, we can't get her on the field? What Then what happens? She was, co- she was coming on the field. Like, <laughs> she, was get, she was getting on the field. Somebody was getting tased. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. It might have been that lady, but somebody was getting tased. Where's Marshall when you need him? All right, well, yeah, that's a better story than I even thought. I mean, I just saw the video of it. I didn't – I mean, the background to it. Any questions? Are we good? Everybody's good with that? 
Foundation. Tell them again, and uh, you, you, you tell them once, tell them again, then you repeat them. Well, tell me. Uh, it, it's going to be the 29th. It's Tuesday night. We're going to be dressed funny, doing funny things. My wife and I have bandied about Laverne and Shirley for a long time. Anybody's got the L you want to sew on to me, we'll figure that whole thing out. And I guess we'll do some push-ups or some socks or something. I don't know. Some heels. Where am I going to get heels like that? <laughs> oh, my God. She's been wanting to dress me as a female for 20 years at the Halloween, Raven's Halloween party. And we've never... We, we've never... She's been Garth. She's been... Elwood Blues. You know, she's been all that. So one year I have to give in. Shave up tight and do something stupid. <laughs> why not for you guys? You know, for Anthony Perfect. Bowling, why not? All right, tell everybody about the foundation real quick and, and how they can get involved. Uh, so right now we're going out to schools. So we're having people contact us to go out um, and reach out to schools. What it's, does that mean? You come out, what do you do? We come out, talk, to, same thing, tell our story, talk to the kids. Could just kind of have like a dialogue um, where it's just really honest and we're really real. And I think it kind of opens people's eyes that like they're not the only ones going through this. And sure. it's not a subject that you're not supposed to talk about. So um, I was definitely that way. Like I just didn't talk about it. I was, was that just, always your cause? I mean, you, you thought like if you make the league and you have an opportunity to do this. Was this something you talked about in college or something that when you got here, you're like, what is your cause, right? Because I've asked a lot of players over the years, like, what is your cause? I mean, my wife had leukemia, so that became my cause, right? You, you, it, it, sometimes it calls to you, right? Yeah, so the for me, it was, you know, it never really was, like, predetermined. Um, but someone asked me to come out and speak to a school about this kid that was getting bullied. And so we came out. And here, here? No, 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 this was Alabama. back in Alabama. This okay. started before I got drafted. Okay, fair enough. And did that in March. And in April, we hit 26 schools. Um, wow! In, in the April, month of April, in the month yeah. of April, at Alabama, in Alabama. Uh, oh, Wallace. so this is seeded way before you got here. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that happens, and then we were able to actually a year ago today we kicked off our foundation, and it became an official foundation. So, um, so yeah, we're we're a year in, a year officially. It's our birthday too. Yeah, hey. <laughs> it's birthday. It's birthday. It's good. You're not as old as me. I am. Yeah, yeah you're right. Gray here. Bradley Bozeman, Nikki Bozeman. You can find their uh, foundation on the work. I'm going to share it. Uh, we're going to put a commercial together uh, this week for you guys. So if I were to do that in a minute, a minute or less, tell everybody exactly why they're coming out and what they're coming out for. Go ahead, Nikki. Come out and support the Bradley and Nikki Bozeman Foundation. Wood Home Country Club, 7 to 11. Bring your best costumes, uh, your best dance moves. It's going to be a great dancing. time. Okay, good. Yep, good always dancing. dancing. All um, right. It's going to be a great time. There's going to be uh, a lot of familiar faces there from uh, from one of your favorite teams that were purple. Um, I'm going to have a tan. There you go. Yep, a tan. And uh, it's just going to be a good time. Costume contest, silent auction, 50-50 raffle. Um, Michael Jackson dance-off. That's a tradition. we got to do that. There you go. We play yep. Thriller, everybody dances, right? We yep. do that every year. Yep. Absolutely. All right. It'll be a good time. All right. We're going to be at Woodhome uh, Country Club and get more information at? B-R-A-D, BradNickyBozeman.com. All right. And if you need them out at your school, you can find them there as well. I want to sign off for everybody out here at Greenmount Station. Give it up for Bradley and for Nikki for telling their story, entertaining us. Families in the back. Hi, everyone. We got the bonus room in the back. Get the crab cakes fried. We'll be back more. Uh, it's bye week. It's Baltimore. Pie. They, they always boo the crab cakes fried. fried. I feel like it's sacrilegious. You're from the South. What's wrong with y'all? Come on, man. It's fried. I'm from Alabama. I get it fried. That's what I do. We are WNSD.net AM 1570, WNSD Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop having fun talking sports. And Baltimore positive all during the bye week. Make sure you're checking that out.